So, okay. Um, good afternoon or good uh, morning, everyone. Welcome to the web event, which will address the treatments for inbound and outbound intercompany transactions in China. My name is Ling Zhang. I'm a transfer pricing specialist at Transfer Pricing Associates and also a co-member of the China Desk at TPA's headquarters. I'm specializing uh, in advising clients on Chinese and international transfer pricing issues. Uh, my co-speaker uh, today, uh, Zhi Qun Shi, is a tax partner of the Minter PKU law firm. Mr. Shi is licensed to practice law in China and also holds the qualification of a certificate enterprise legal advisor. Uh, he is an experienced Chinese lawyer specialized in Chinese tax services. So. Before we start going through the slides and presentation, uh, I like I like to mention that we are aiming to limit this print this presentation to around 40 minutes. Uh, there is a Q and A session in the end, so where we will provide you the answers regarding uh, your questions. Uh, of course, you also can drop us emails if you like to discuss your questions separately. Uh, the presentation slides will send to your email account, which you use to register this event. And uh, you can also download the presentation and uh, view the web, uh, view the event recordings at the TPA's website uh, appro uh, appro approximately a week later. So, uh, in this web webinar, please note that only panelists can speak. Uh, the attendees cannot, so if you have any questions, please prepare them earlier and uh, send to um, all panelists by using the chat function. Then we can answer your questions in the Q&A session. Okay, uh, so now I would like to start our pre presentation today. So. In recent years, with China playing key role in world economy, there are, there are an increasing number of intercompany transactions with foreign affiliates in China. In order to assist the multinationals' enterprises with respect to transfer pricing risks and also avoid the double uh, taxation issues, we would like to um, discuss the tax treatment for nine selected intercompany transactions uh, in China. So in today's agenda, I will first briefly introduce the uh, related Chinese tax categories involved in these nine intercompany transactions. Uh, subsequently, I will describe the consequences of charges for the six, inter six inbound intercompany transactions you can see um, regarding the products, services, technology, um, use of technology, uh, branding, loans, guaranteeing fees provided by the foreign affiliates to Chinese affiliates, and another uh, three outbound intercompany transactions, which is about contra contract manufacturing services, contract R&D services, and other uh, contract services provided by Chinese affiliates to foreign affiliates. Uh, in the end of, of the presentation, you can find the Chinese tax checklist for these nine intercompany transactions in Appendix 1. Um, taxable services under China's VAT pilot program in Appendix 2. And, uh, in, and there's a list of references in Appendix 3. So now I uh, would like to address the main Chinese tax categories. Uh, in China, the, the uh, the main Chinese tax categories related to these nine uh, selected intercompany transactions are customer duties, uh, value-added tax, business tax, consumption tax, corporate income tax, or enterprise income tax, and the last one is city maintenance and construction tax and the education surcharges. Other Chinese tax categories, for example, the uh, individual income tax, resource tax, urban and township land use tax, 
and um, others like tobacco, leaf tax, etc., are not covered in our presentation today. Uh, with respect to custom duties, uh, they range from 0% to 100%. Uh, according to the statist statistics provided by customs, the average rate is 12.47%. The value added tax and the business tax is primarily is primar, uh, primarily the Chinese ten uh, Chinese ten, ten ten over tax. The for the value added tax, which is imposed on the uh, entity or individual who are which is engaged in selling goods, providing processing, repair or replacement services, or importing goods. All providing pilot services. Uh, this actually, this pilot services is effect on 1st uh, August 2013, which is this year, on nationwide basis in China, uh, which we will also discuss later. So the basic tax uh, value added tax rate is 6% or 11% or 17%. The business tax, which is you can call it a BT, uh, is imposed on the entity or individuals who is providing taxable services, uh, transferring intangible assets or selling immovable property within, in chi within China. Uh, generally, uh, the business tax rate is 3% or 5%, but for the entertainment industry, uh, it's 20%. 20, 20 uh, in here, please note, for the um, a value added tax and business tax, uh, they cannot be applied at the same time. Uh, as such, if uh, VAT is applied, the business tax will not be due, and the vice versa. Then the following one is the concept consumption tax. Uh, it is uh, imposed on the entities or individuals who, uh, which is engaged in producing, also consigned processing or importing taxable consumer goods within China. Uh, in China, the consumption tax only covers 14 tax items, such as tobacco, uh, where the cigar is 36% uh, consumption tax, and 5% uh, for alcoholic drinks and alcohol, 30% consumption tax for cos uh, cosmetics, 5% consumption tax for jewelry, and other um, pressure stones, etc. Uh, here, the, for the corporate income tax, it is very uh, important in China. Uh, generally, there, there uh, we have uh, resident and enterprises and non-resident enterprises. For the resident enterprises, uh, which pay the corporate income tax for their income sourced within and outside of China. For the non-resident, and, and for, sorry, and for the Resident income uh, for the resident enterprises, the corporate income tax rate is, is 25 percent. Uh, for the non-resident uh, enterprises, it shall also pay 25 percent corporate income, but it depends on whether uh, the non-resident enterprises have organizations or establishments within China and. Also, whether the income is in fact related to such organizations and establishment. Uh, in China, uh, some high technology enterprises engaged in R&D activities, a uh, favorable 15% 15, uh, 15 of tax rate is applicable. Uh, we will talk this uh, in the uh, eighth intercompany transaction. The last one, which is city maintenance and construction tax and education surcharges, which you can call it CMCT and ES. These uh, surcharges are calculated at the percentage of the VAT or BT and the consumption tax due. Uh, generally, the uh, CMCT and ES rate is 10%, but it may differences uh, based on the locations of the enterprises. For example, if the enterprise is in a uh, city, uh, city uh, area, so 7% will be applicable. But uh, for the other um, area, like a country or town area, maybe 5%. Uh, 
And this all, all calculated based on the sum of uh, business tax or VAT and consumption tax. Uh, so these are these are brief. Uh, these are the main tax categories in the in our intercompany transactions we are going to describe today. Then the following uh, will be the nine intercompany transactions. The first one, intercompany transaction, uh, is about the foreign affiliates selling products to Chinese affiliates. Within this intercompany transaction, the Chinese affiliates acting as importing uh, acting as importer will uh, have to pay the customer customer duties, uh, VAT, and the consumption consumption tax if the uh, if the products which is uh, imported is under the uh, one of the fourteen items, for example, the tab uh, tobacco, alcohol, and the cosmetics, etc. There are all tax exceptions for Chinese affiliates uh, for Chinese affiliates regarding the customer duty and the consumption tax. For example, uh, when Chinese OLED manufacturing imports raw materials and these materials cannot be produced in China, uh, uh, according to uh, according to Tai Guan Shui 2012 number 16. The Chinese affiliates are exempt from the customer duties. So in here, the customer duty is 0%. Um, and also because the importing products is not under the category of 14 items levied consumption tax, the Chinese uh, then the Chinese affiliates only need to pay 17% of the value added tax for importing these raw materials from the foreign affiliates. Uh, according to Chinese, according to China transfer pricing rules, the purchase the purchased price must be in line with the arm's length principle. As these are intercompany transactions. The second intercompany transaction is about foreign affiliates providing services to Chinese affiliates. Within this intercompany transaction, the foreign affiliates will uh, bear VAT or business tax. Depending if the services is under a uh, VAT pilot program, um, uh, actually the VAT pilot program is um, in China is effective first uh, August two thousand this year as I uh, uh, explained earlier. Uh, it is it, uh, it is uh, used in a in nationwide basis. Under this program, uh, it consists of one plus seven industries. Uh, in here, the under uh, in here business tax will be uh, replaced by the value added tax because in China generally the service should be charged business tax, but under this VT pilot program uh, here uh, will only charge value added tax instead of business tax. For the more details of this in uh, one plus seven industries, uh, you can find that uh, in our appendix two. Uh, in addition, the CMCT and the ES is also uh, is also applicable. Uh, corporate income tax may applicable depends on um, uh, depends on certain uh, uh, depends on certain conditions. In here, we are just uh, um, uh, summarize the three conditions of the services uh, in this in the table. You can see uh, the three types. Uh, the first one, if the service is provided outside of China, uh, then the foreign affiliates do not need to pay any taxes under the Chinese tra regulations. If the service is provided in China but do not constitute a permanent establishment, you can call it a PE, then the foreign affiliates will not liable to any corporate income tax, but with 6% of value added tax if the services is under the VAT pilot. If the services is not under the VAT pilot, then it will be uh, applicable 5% business tax. If the third situation is if the um, 
the service pro provided by foreign affiliates constitutes a PE, then the foreign affiliates is liable to pay 25% corporate income tax, and also uh, either VAT or BT depends on uh, again depending on the services is under the VAT pilot program or not. For the Chinese affiliates, uh, the cost of services should be consistent with the arm's length principle, and also facilitate the application of withholding uh, income tax in China. The third intercompany transaction uh, is about foreign affiliates providing uh, rights to make use of technology to Chinese affiliates. If um, if the use of technology is under uh, is is in one plus seven industries, then the foreign affiliates are liable to VAT. If the techno if the use of technology is not in one plus seven industries, then the foreign affiliates are only liable to business tax. Uh, again, in in appendix two, you can find the relevant details. Either uh, either value added tax or business tax, they can um, they can be exempt, but uh, the the uh, but the uh, affiliates should request the. Uh, should uh, should file uh, um, uh, should file an explicit request for tax exception for value added tax or business tax. Uh, for foreign uh, foreign affiliates are also obliged obliged to pay corporate income tax with ten percent withholding tax, unless a different rate. Um, is applicable under the presence of a tax treaty. According to uh, according to Guo Shui Han 2009 number 507, which provides for the applicable of royalty uh, articles to technical services fees, the royalty fee paid for the use of technology uh, can be deducted by the Chinese affiliates for corporate income tax purposes. Uh, for here, for example, when KFC China used the software designed by the foreign affiliates, the royalty article, uh, a royalty fee is applicable. But if the techno, uh, but if the technology is outdated or without any uniqueness, then the royalty fee is not applicable. So the payment will be uh, deemed as the management fee. Then you cannot the Chinese affiliates. Cannot deduct the, the the management fee paid to foreign affiliates for the corporate income tax purposes. The following, uh, the fourth actually, uh, fourth intercompany transaction is about foreign affiliates providing uh, branding to uh, Chinese affiliates. Within this intercompany transaction, the foreign affiliates will bear five percent withholding withholding business tax and the uh, CMCT and the ES accordingly because uh, we have 5% business tax charge and uh, also 10% royalty fee for corporate income tax um, purposes. Of course, unless a different rate is applicable uh, under the presence of a tax treaty. The royalty fee paid to foreign, uh, here, uh, please note that the royalty fee paid to um, foreign affiliates must be consistent with the arm's length principle. This is also um, required by Chinese tax authorities. Uh, in this intercompany transaction, we give example. Uh, when Coca-Cola US licenses, licensed its brand to the Chinese associated entities, and also to the Japanese uh, associate entities. In the case of Japan, uh, Coca-Cola US uh, charged like a 7% royalty fee for use of the brand. However, um, things in China, the Coca-Cola brand is well uh, is well known for the Chinese version of the brand. So we could see the Coca-Cola China uh, do not entirely uh, do not entirely use the US brand. So uh, as such, a lower royalty fee may be applicable. Okay. 
the fixed intercompany transaction, which is about foreign affiliates uh, lending intercompany loans to the Chinese affiliates. Uh, the foreign affiliates will bear 5% withholding tax on interest for the purpose of uh, business tax, uh, CMCT and ES, and 10% withholding, in, uh, withholding income tax, uh, withholding tax on interest for the purpose of a corporate income tax, unless, uh, again, unless a different rate is applicable under the presence of a tax treaty. Uh, in ch according to China's thin capitalization rules, the debt equity ratio is two to one maximum for general enterprises, and five to one for financial institutions. When it is compliant with the thin capitalization rules, the interest rate not exceeding the basic lending rate can be deducted for uh, for corporate income purposes. Uh, for example. Uh, when U.S. affiliates lending the intercompany loans uh, with amount of 100 million U.S. dollars to uh, Chinese affiliates, assume the Chinese affiliates is qualified with the thin, uh, is qualified with the requirement of thin capitalization rules, um, and also 6% interest rate here. Uh, also assume it not exceeding. Is not exceeding the basic lending rate published by the China uh, by the People's of China People's Bank of China, then the Chinese affiliates will pay six million U.S. dollars interest, and this six million uh, dollars interest can be deducted by Chinese affiliates for the corporate income tax purposes. Uh, the six uh, the six intercompany transaction, which is about uh, foreign affiliates uh, providing guaranteeing to uh, Chinese affiliates, according to uh, SAT Public Notice 2011, number 24, the guaranteeing fee can be treated as interest. So the consequences of charges for this intercompany transaction are similar to the fifth. Uh, fifth uh, 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 similar to the previous one, which is the fifth intercompany transaction. Uh, so I will not repeat the, the, the consequence of charges, but uh, here we have an example. Uh, for example, uh, when Philip Netherlands um, provides guaranteeing services to, chi to its Chinese uh, associates, which is uh, Philip China, uh, then Philip to China pay 50 basis point guarantee fee, which is 0.5% guarantee fee. Assume Philips China is compliant with the thin capitalization rules, then the 50 basis point guarantee fee can be deducted by Chinese affiliate for corporate income purposes. Okay, um, these are the six inbound intercompany transactions. Then the following three intercompany transactions uh, are outbound um, provided by Chinese affiliates to foreign affiliates. So the seventh intercompany transaction is when Chinese affiliates providing the contract manufacturing services to foreign affiliates. Uh, within this intercompany transaction, uh, Chinese affiliates will pay va uh, value-added tax, um, CMCT and ES, Again, because um, this is calculated based on the percentage of VAT or BT and the consumption due, and also corporate income tax. Uh, in here, the um, in this under this intercompany transaction, the value added tax may apply fully or partially tax refund, depending the depending on the products to be um, to be manufacturing actually will be exported by the Chinese affiliates. For example, when Chinese affiliates uh, contract manufacture manufactures the optical discs, uh, it only. It, uh, the Chinese affiliates need to pay 17% uh, value-added tax, uh, but the Chinese, uh, the Chinese affiliates can apply 13% uh, VAT tax refund, uh, and also 1% 17% CMCT and ES, and 25% corporate income tax. 
In here, you may see that when calculate the CMCT and the ES, we are using the 17% instead of like 4% because because the Chinese affiliates ask a refund, 13% tax refund. But this is only for the value added tax. When um, calculating the CMCT and the ES, it still it only can use 17%, which is not tax refund. Mm. Again, um, in in this intercompany transaction, because the Chinese affiliates um, only um, according to the Chinese TP rules, uh, if the Chinese affiliates only performing the single function, so uh, that it should be remain low, uh, low but reasonable profit at arm's length principle. Okay, this is the seventh. The the eighth intercompany transaction is about Chinese affiliates providing contract R and D services to foreign affiliates. Uh, in this uh, in this intercompany transaction, uh, the Chinese affiliates will bear zero percent value added tax according to uh, Tai Shui 2003 number 37 because this is uh, um, uh, for uh, Chinese. Uh, uh, it's like equal to Chin Chinese affiliates exporting the services to outbound. So Chinese tax authorities actually is encouraging these kind of services. So they have the zero percent uh, value added tax. And uh, also the the Chinese affiliates uh, it's, uh, it's need to also need to pay twenty five percent corporate income tax or a different tax rate if the if there are tax incentives. For example, uh, if if it is a transfer of technology um, and the tax income is less than RMB, which is Chinese yuan, five million, then there's a tax exception. If the income is more than uh, Chinese yuan, five million, the uh, the tax the corporate income tax rate is twelve point five percent. The if the the second uh, the second condition is if the Chinese entities is Chinese affiliates uh, is qualified of high and new technology enterprise, um, then it only needs to pay fifteen percent corporate income tax. The third layer the third criteria is if the Chinese affiliates are double soft enterprise. Then there is a tax exception for first two years, but for the following three years, it needs to pay 12.5% uh, of corporate income tax. The last one is if the corporate, um, if the Chinese affiliates is the technology advanced services enterprise, so the 15% uh, of corporate income tax rate is applicable. Uh, in uh, for this uh, for this intercompany transaction, the uh, most difficult part is to test if the Chinese affiliates are really qualified with uh, the three um, the three uh, different enterprises like uh, uh, high and new technology enterprises and or double soft enterprise or technology advanced service enterprise. And the SAT actually also uh, issued a circular. To ask the taxpayer to check if they are qualified with the requirement or not. So the last intercompany transaction I like to describe today is Chinese affiliates providing other uh, contract services to foreign affiliates. Uh, within this intercompany transaction, the Chinese affiliates will bear either VAT or um, if the services is under the VAT pilot or business tax, if the service is not under the VAT pilot, and also CMCT and the ES and the corporate income tax. Um, uh, for example, when Chinese uh, affiliates provide provide the intellectual property registration services in China, so um, it only needs to pay value added tax with the tax exception. And uh, zero percent CMCT and yes, because there's no uh, VAT or BT or uh, CT uh, uh, charts in here.
then uh, because it's Chinese uh, Chinese enterprises, of course, 25% corporate income tax is applicable. Okay, um, so this is the uh, nine intercompany transactions you see in the appendix one. Um, uh, it's just like a, a, a overview of a, of tax uh, checklist. Uh, regarding the cross-border intercompany transaction in China, this is just like a um, very generic overview. So, there, uh, if your company have very uh, have very specific uh, 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 questions, we may need to talk later. But uh, this again, this is just a generic overview. So, uh, the. Appendix two, as I said, this is uh, we list the taxable services under China's VAT pilot. You can see the one plus seven dot three, which is um, including the transportation services and the modern service industry, which is called in China, with different tax rate. Uh, the then the appendix three, uh, which is the uh, the list of reference may um, involve involved in this uh, nine. Intercompany transactions. Okay. Uh, all right. These are uh, these are all slides for today's web event. If you have any questions, please send to us by use of a chat function now. Okay. Uh, if there's no question, um, uh, you maybe if you have a question later, you also can um, drop us emails regarding your questions. We can. Rep uh, we uh we happy we are happy to answer your questions in separate emails. So again, uh you can uh thank you for participating in our web event today. The presentation slides will be sent to you um sent to your email account you which you use to register for this event. And uh, you can uh, you can also log in TPA's website to download the presentation and uh, all review the event recording a week later. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you everyone and wish you have a nice day.